Dear colleagues, a very warm welcome to this Geislich webinar on CAD-CAM titanium mesh in guided bone reconstruction. The case that I want to introduce you is Jose. Jose is 51 years old patient that come to our clinic in order to replace the missing teeth in the lower jaw. Jose is classified as healthy patient, HSA1 patient without any type of uh, disease. Present a fully dentate maxilla and the partial dentate mandible. The first things that strike us is the huge vertical defect in the fourth quadrant. If we took a close-up view of that defect, we can appreciate 6-7 mm height defect in a long span in the posterior mandible from 4.3 to 4.6. So the first part of our diagnostic phase is based on X-ray analysis. We took orthopantomography to our patients in order to analyze the size of the defect. Of utmost importance is the presence or our absence of the bony peaks. We can appreciate in this case the presence of beautifully distal bony peaks and mesial bony peaks that allow us to think in a predictable vertical ridge augmentation. Secondly, we took a convincity to our patients in which we can appreciate that the defect is a vertical and horizontal defect, so a combined defect. We always took CBCT with radiological guide in order to be able to analyze the correct ideal final 3D position of our teeth in relationship to the bone anatomy. So now we are able to enter in the first preoperative phase of our protocol that is the cut county mesh planning. For cut county mesh planning, we need the DICOM files of the CBCT of our patient. We send to a REOS company the CBCT of our patients. After more or less two or three days, they send us the first planification. In this planification, it's utmost importance to analyze the distance between tooth and membrane. In our protocol, we need at least two millimeter distance from the titanium mesh to the mesial and distal tooth. We also have to analyze if the vertical regeneration is correct with the bony peaks correspond to the mesial and distal bony peaks and the presence of holes in the membrane to be able to screw correctly the membrane during the fixation procedure. So after seven, 10 days, we received to our office this beautiful CADCAM uh, titanium mesh and we are ready for entering in the first uh, preoperative phase of uh, uh, delays of tissue technique. So delays of tissue technique is not something new in medicine, it's a soft tissue technique that is used in reconstructive and plastic surgery is based on the delay phenomenon that uh, describes the observation that uh, a tissue that is rendered partially ischemic will undergo a new vascularization and uh, enhance its vascularity. That means that uh, when we open a flap, we increase the new vascularization and we increase the vascularity of our flap. The less of tissue technique works in two steps. The first steps that uh, happen in the first 48 hours and is an early phase of vasodilatation, reorientation of the vessel and increased blood flow. This is when we cut the soft tissue the first 48 hours what happened. And the late phase that involved prolonged change in tissue metabolism and new vascularization during the first 14 days after soft tissue uh, elevation. So how we perform the lace of tissue technique? We perform the lace of tissue technique with a crestal incision and intracircular incision, one tooth mesial and one tooth distal from the defect. We elevate a full thickness flap and we close the flap with single suture. This technique take 10-15 minutes and we did it in order to increase the vascularity of uh, our flap. So we wait two, three weeks from the delays of tissue technique in order to be able to have the best vascularity from uh, our flaps and start our bone reconstructive surgery.
Now we enter in the intraoperative phase and the first one is the bone reconstruction. In this phase, we perform the vertical and horizontal ridge augmentation with the cut cam titanium mesh. In bone reconstructive surgery, we always perform full thickness flap, crystal incision and intracircular incisions. We never perform vertical releasing incision in order not to, to affect the vascularity of uh, the flaps. As first steps of our surgery, we manage both lingual and buccal flap. Buccal flap was managed with a single incision in the periosteum and the lingual flap was managed as Marco Ronda explained in his article elevating the superior fibers of the malloyohoid muscle. We perform this as first step of our surgery because this provokes an intensive bleeding and if we perform this step as final step of our surgery we will uh, provoke an increased risk of hematoma to our patients. Then we go to collect autologous bone. We collect autologous bone from the mandibular ramus with uh, uh, a scraper. We use only one surgical site as a donor site and the recipient site. Why we use bone scraper? Because as described in the literature by Richard Myron, analyzing the osteogenic potential of autologous bone collected with different techniques, bone meal and bone scraper result in a significant higher cell number after four and eight hours and after five days similar patterns were observed in all the different techniques. Here we have how our autologous bone collected. We mix it in a percentage of 60% autologous bone, 40% bios, big size particle, 2 gram bios. We use big size particle because if not, small size particle will go out through the membrane holes. And now it's the time of performing the check of the correct fit of the membrane. We have to check if our planification correspond to the clinical position of the membrane. And here we can appreciate the perfect adaptation of our uh, titanium mesh. Now we remove the membrane and we perform bone decortication. Bone decortication uh, are needed in order to increase the vascularity and the blood supply from our recipient site to our graft. However, recently bone decortication were analyzed in a meta-analysis by Elvira Gonzalez and Luca de Stavola and they conclude that there is a no sh scientific support in order to uh, perform bone decortication in guided bone regeneration. However, in our opinion, it makes all sense perform bone decortication in order to increase the blood supply, especially in posterior mandible with a big uh, cortical bone. And now 80% of the surgery is done, more or less 30-40 minutes passed from the starting of uh, uh, the surgery. We have to take our autologous bone plus our biomaterial and compact it carefully inside uh, the membrane. And now the membrane in place in its correct position and we have only to fix the membrane with osteosynthesis screw. We fix the membrane only in the vestibular side because uh, it's uh, precise enough that we do not need to fix the membrane in the lingual uh, side. As you can see, we place one screw missile, one screw distal, and we have an immobility of uh, our uh, titanium uh, mesh. So now it's time to protect our regeneration with a collagen membrane. We use BioGuide membrane in order to protect the first healing phase of our graft from soft tissue uh, invagination. And finally, we close the flap with a double line suture. We use a horizontal mattress suture and simple suture over it in order to be able to close the flap correctly.
Here we have our step-by-step -step procedure from the full thickness flap without releasing incision, bone decortication, the membrane, membrane with biomaterial fixated and the protection with barrier col collagen barrier membrane and suture. Post-operative healing, we have a perfect healing of this regeneration. We remove suture usually after 20, 21 days from the regenerative surgery. And now it's time to wait. It's time to wait nine months in this big vertical ridge augmentation. We wait nine to 10, 20, 12 months in order to re-enter and place our implants. So here we have our baseline and nine months beautiful situation of our vertical ridge augmentation. No complication in this patient, so no membrane exposure. So now we are able to start our fourth phase in the intraoperative, so new convincity in which we can appreciate the beautiful integration of our graft with the recipient side, a beautiful vertical augmentation in which we can appreciate one centimeter horizontal gain and the 5.67 six millimeter vertical height gain. This is a superimposition technique between first CBCT, preoperative CBCT, and second CBCT before implant placement. Now we enter in the fourth phase. We can see the beautiful healing of this vertical regeneration and we perform easily full thickness flap in order to expose the membrane and we can see how bone grow into the membrane how how corticalized is that bone thanks to the huge blood supply that uh, come from the uh, soft tissue from uh, our uh, flaps how the membrane is, is is completely integrated with bone and how the newly formed bone it's completely integrated with uh, a native patient's bone. We remove the membrane completely and very easily thanks to the um, opening in the crystal side of the membrane. And we can appreciate a beautiful, a beautiful regenerated bone. Here we have a comparison between preoperatively post intraoperatively and with implant placement. We place three implants for the uh, final prosthetic phase of this uh, patient. Step-by-step -step procedure with the membrane, membrane removal and implant placement and the suture of the surgical site. Healing, always perfect healing for, for these patients. One week, two weeks when we remove the suture flap completely uh, closed and orthopantomography in order to check the, the correct implant placement and regenerated area. Now we entered in the last phase, postoperatively phase. One of the most important phase is to uh, protect our regenerated bone and to protect our uh, our implant. So we have to uh, re-establish the correct amount of keratinized tissue in our patient. How you can see in, the, in that photo, we have lost mostly all the keratinized tissue and attached gingiva. Now we have to re-establish this in the correct uh, uh, place. So we perform partial thickness flap second surgery on the implant placing healing uh, uh, abutment. We uh, take a graft from the palate. We take a, a epithelial, epithelized uh, graft from the palate and we uh, suture the flap apically and the graft in uh, around our uh, implants. And all the remaining part will heal for a second intention healing another view of how perfectly adapt the, the graft to our implant and the step-by-step -step procedure on how we perform this free gingival graft around our implant in order to increase keratinized uh, tissue. Always a good healing for these patients, one week, two weeks when we remove the suture and beautiful healing after uh, suture removal. 
we wait we wait two three months for um uh, for for the new keratinized tissue integration and uh, we start our uh, digital prosthetic phase after three months exactly from the free gingival uh, graft prosthetic phase we take digital impression to our patient for digital uh, models in order to be able to uh, give to the patients a ceramometallic crown over a multi-unit abatement here you can see the perfect adaptation of the of the new crowns on patient uh, uh, mouth peri-implant marginal bone stable in uh, and uh, perfect uh, uh, regenerated stable bone here we have a comparison between start point and uh, uh, final result with uh, uh, our uh, final prosthesis metal ceramic prosthesis and final photo with happy patient after 16 months of treatment the case that I present to you today is part of a big multicentric study. We have operated until now 16 cases. We found a mean vertical bone gain of 6.4 mm and a volume of 2.5. Very important in our uh, study analysis is the mean operation time of 1 hour and 30 minutes for huge vertical bone reconstruction. We have only one infection until now and 20% of exposure. So, as conclusion of my presentation about uh, this technique, it's very interesting to say that uh, we have a huge time reduction, we have uh, a mean operation time of 1 hour and 30 a minute in huge vertical defect. It's gentle with the tissue because uh, the membrane itself adapts very well, so we have only to think in soft tissue uh, management is stiff enough to no collapse this membrane and make vertical regimentation an easy technique for uh, most of the oral surgeon. Thank you for your attention.